first time I ever did it, uh, it was very emotional. And it, it keeps being emotional because, you know, I'm singing with my old buddy again. Hey everyone, welcome to Soundscapes Rock. Today's episode is a real Beatles mystery. It's about their last song ever now and then. Have you ever wondered why this song took so long to come out or how artificial intelligence was used to finally finish this song that got lost in time? Well, the song was written by John Lennon in the 70s, but he never finished it. For years, nobody heard about it. Then suddenly, just a few days ago, it's back in the spotlight. But there's some drama around it. People are suspecting if Paul McCartney used artificial intelligence to mimic Lennon's voice. And why did George Harrison refuse to work on the song in the 90s? In this episode, we're going to explain how the song was made and all the exciting stuff that happened along the way. Before we start, if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon for updates and help us reach 200 likes to beat the algorithm. Now, let's rewind to the late 70s. John Lennon was in his New York City pouring his heart out into a song. And this is where Now and Then was born. Lennon sat at his piano and recorded a five minute demo on a simple tape recorder. The song he was trying to make was a classic apologetic love song that he became known for towards the end of his career. The demo wasn't perfect and some verses felt nearly complete, while others were like sketches with lines he hadn't fully developed. Now fast forward two decades later, Yoko Ono gave Paul McCartney two cassettes tapes. These weren't just any tapes, they were like hidden treasures containing home recordings the world had never heard. Songs that were never completed and never released. Among these were Free as a Bird and Real Love on one tape and on the other tape now and then and Grow Old with Me, the Beatles decided to focus on Now and Then, and it wasn't just about completing another song, it was about reviving a piece of Lennon. After the tragic loss of John Lennon in the 80s, the song was shelved for nearly three decades. It wasn't until the mid-90s during the Beatles anthology project that this song resurfaced. This ambitious retrospective was stirring up nostalgia, and the song was considered as the third reunion single for this project. But as fate would have it, the song was set aside once more, and the tape remained untouched for nearly three decades, like a time capsule holding Lennon's voice and spirit. So let's dig into the reasons why the song was shelved once again. In March 95, the three surviving Beatles, Paul, George, and Ringo, gathered to breathe life into Lennon's home demo. The plan was to create a new track by overlaying their recordings onto Lennon's original demo. The process started with recording a rough backing track. They were essentially building a new song around Lennon's voice from decades ago. We could only imagine the challenge of trying to fit their new sounds with Lennon's voice recorded at home in low quality, However, this ambitious project hit some serious roadblocks. Initially, producer Jeff Lynne recalled that the sessions were incredibly brief, lasting just one afternoon. The song had a chorus, but was almost entirely lacking in verses. They laid down a backing track, but never really finished it. A major block was the technical quality of the original demo. There was a persistent buzz noise in the recording that was very loud, making it harder to remove. This wasn't just a small noise, it was a constant presence rooted in the electrical circuits of Lennon's apartment. The technical challenges weren't the only issues. George Harrison was reportedly not a fan of the song. In fact, McCartney later revealed that Harrison had bluntly called it rubbish. It wasn't just the recording quality that he objected to, he seemed not to like the song itself. McCartney told Q Magazine in 97 that the Beatles took a democratic decision and decided not to do it because they valued each member's opinion. So they chose to shelve the song once again. Fast forward to 2023 and the song makes a groundbreaking comeback and this time the Beatles' vision for the song finally comes to fruition. In a press release, Olivia Harrison, George Harrison's widow, tried to explain her late husband's perspective. She revealed that George felt the technical issues with Lennon's demo were too great to overcome back in the days. He doubted they could finish the track to the high standards the Beatles always upheld. However, Olivia believes that if George was here today, he would have joined Paul and Ringo in completing the song. 
What are your thoughts about that? Do you think Harrison would change his mind about the song he called Rubbish? In the final version, Paul added new lyrics complementing the original composition. But the real game changer was how they managed to isolate Lennon's voice from the old demo. Thanks to the wonders of artificial intelligence and sound source separation, Lennon's vocals were extracted cleanly while maintaining the authentic essence of his performance. Paul was quick to clarify the role of AI in this process, and he confirmed that nothing was artificially created. It's all real Lennon's voice and even Harrison's guitar tracks from the 90s sessions. The AI wasn't used to create anything new. It was employed only to clean up what was already there. In simple words, they told the machine, here's the voice, here's the piano. Now let's keep the voice and lose the piano. If you would like to know how this AI technology works, we made a video explaining the process and you can find it in the description below. Now, the band turned to none other than Peter Jackson's Wingnut films, known for their groundbreaking audio restoration technology. The challenge was to isolate Lennon's vocals from the original home recording, which was mixed with the sound of his piano. The studio worked magic on a digital copy of the tape provided by Lennon's son. Interestingly, this copy was of far better quality than the one the Beatles had back in 1995. And that's what pushed some fans to suspect this recording might not have been around in 1995. After successfully separating Lennon's vocals, the song underwent a transformative addition, a string section composed by Giles Martin, Paul McCartney, and Ben Foster. To maintain secrecy and avoid leaks, this piece was recorded under the decoy name Give and Take at Capitol Studios in late April 2022. But the creativity didn't stop there. Paul and Martin added portions of original vocal recordings from Here There and other songs copying the techniques used in the 2006 remix album Love. This blending of old and new was a smart move, with the final track being almost a minute shorter than Lennon's original demo. The final track was produced by Paul and Martin, with Jeff Lynne receiving credit for additional production. The audio work extended to the stereo and Dolby Utmost mixes, as well as the vinyl mastering all completed at the legendary Abbey Road Studios. All right, guys, as we wrap up, let's touch on something important Paul McCartney said. He insists on wanting everyone to know they didn't make anything up in the studio. McCartney had a chat with the BBC and explained how they only used AI to pull Lennon's voice from an old recording. But this caused quite a stir online. Some people thought McCartney was using fancy tech to make it sound like Lennon was singing something new. So what do you think about using this technology in music? Is it cool if it's just for fixing up old songs or do you worry it might go too far and replace real singers? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you aren't yet. See you in the next video.